Hey everyone, Darkwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 Hero Guides. Today we're going to be taking a look at Lina. So Lina is a mid-hero, but she can also be played as a support, but we're mainly going to be focusing on the mid version of this hero, and that's because the support kind of does the same thing that the mid version does, it's just that the support kind of only does magic damage and those kinds of things, more relies on magic damage and stunning and that kind of stuff, but kind of plays very similar to the mid. The difference is, when you play this hero mid, not only can she do a good amount of magic damage, she has a stun, she has a lot of magic burst damage, but she can also transition to more of a right-click kind of carry style of hero. She has extremely far-ranged attacks, so like her attack range is very far, she can dominate mid lanes because of this attack range, she almost can be like a sniper hero, she can sometimes outrange towers as well to, you know, not even take damage when she's hitting towers, that's how much range this hero has, it's very, very unique in that case. Obviously not as much as sniper, but very very similar in that way, but she also mixes in that magic damage and a lot of attack speed, a lot of right-click damage as well that she can get um, if you buy the right items. So that's, I think, what you should do if you are going to play this hero mid, is kind of go more for that right-click style build. You can mix in the magic damage, of course, always, but mainly go to carry the game as a right clicker. And so I think because of that, this hero is very, very good for beginners. Anyone that's looking to learn mid, to play mid, I think Lena is the perfect hero because this hero, good attack range, um, kind of a bad a cast or attack animation um, and cast animations, actually very long cast animations, easy to dodge spells. So you have to get good with your spells. You also have to get good with your attack animation before you get a lot of attack speed, before you get your passive, which I'll talk about when we look at the abilities. But before that, you have to get good with last hitting, but you can harass enemies. You can burst people down. You can get pickoffs. You can have a lot of map presence. You can absolutely destroy and melt towers and melt heroes when you get a lot of items, when you get your farm up, all of that kind of stuff. You kind of do a little bit of everything. This is a very good all around hero. Now, like I said before, some weaknesses are bad attack animation early, bad cast animations. She does have a stun, but it's a very long stun. It takes a very long time for the stun to come out. It's not very instant, so it's kind of hard to actually hit the stun on a hero if they're not already previously stunned or set up in some way with, you know, some other kind of slow or something. So, um, she also has an ultimate that does a lot of burst damage, but it can be dodged. It can be, you know, easily dodged all of those kinds of things. Um, she also has a lot of move speed and a lot of attack speed, but if she loses the stacks from her passive, which we'll look at in a second, she actually isn't very fast. She's pretty slow. She doesn't attack very fast, so you need to kind of keep up the, uh, the spell stacks from the passive to actually make the hero effective, so you kind of have to keep on top of that mechanically to be good, but that's why I think this hero is a very good all-around hero, because it has a lot of things in its kit that can be very useful, but you do have to kind of get good at some parts of the game, um, some mechanical parts of the game, really learn how to position yourself correctly, kind of like a sniper, because if you do get jumped on, you are an intelligence hero. You can get bursted down very quickly. You're not super tanky. You don't have a ton of armor. You don't have a ton of HP, so you need to stay in the back. You need to kind of initiate fights correctly or kind of go after your other initiation on your team has already gone in, those kinds of things, and uh, play very safe with the hero because she's like a drow or a sniper or something else like that as an intelligence ranged hero. So that's Lena. That's how to think about her. Now let's take a look at her abilities and see how they work. So now that we understand Lena in general, we can take a look at her abilities and see how she's able to be that kind of mix between a magic damage hero and a right click hero like I was talking about. So first we're going to take a look at her Dragon Slave. So this is the main ability that she uses in the lane to secure CS and also the main ability she uses to farm. So basically it's pretty simple, you just cast it in a direction and then a like dragon of fire comes out and does damage to everything yes. in its path so we can also show you here it has a decent aoe there as you can see visually and it kind of burns the ground on its way and it does damage to everything that it touches this is the main way that she farms so after you can buy a few items you actually do a lot of damage to creeps you see i can actually clear range creeps in one shot with this maxed out right now um, especially early on creeps like that. So that ends up being a very, very good way to just push the wave in and then potentially either take the tower or go back to the jungle, those kinds of things. It's her main farming spell. And it does a ton of damage in team fights because it's a relatively low cooldown. You can use it a bunch of times and uh, that allows her to do a lot of magic damage. So that's Dragon Sleeve. Next, we're going to look at Light Strike Array. So Light Strike Array is her stun okay. ability. It's another magic damage ability. It has a very bad cast animation though, which is part of why it's balanced. Like if you see there, I casted it and it took so, so long. Like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click it right here and I'm going to tell you when I click it and watch how long it takes to actually stun. So I'm clicking it now and now it stuns. So it's almost like Leshrac stun 
or something like that where it takes a very, very long time. There's also a very obvious animation yes. of her doing something, so the stun's coming out. People can really guess when you're doing it. They can either BKB, they can blink away, they can jump away, they can move away, all those kinds of I'm things. Going. So you can be generally fast, but when you're kind of chasing somebody down and then you use that and you stop, a lot of times they'll get out of the way and the stun AoE isn't all that big. So it's one of those things that this ability, although you can use it, you know, to kill people, a lot of times you need either invisible, like, abilities like an invis rune or shadow blade or something to set it up, maybe Yules to set it up, maybe another stun to set it up, something like that, um, or maybe early on if, you know, heroes don't have boots or something, then yes. you can you can get it on, but you need some kind of surprise, some kind of thing to set it up is usually the best, not just, like, thinking you're gonna use it, um, and stun people just without actually having some way to, um, ensure it, so that's why if it didn't have that negative downside, I think it'd be really, really overpowered. This hero would be super OP. So that's kind of one of the weaknesses of the hero. Now I'm going to skip the passive just for a second and go right to the ultimate here. Because this is another um, magic damage ability. It's just a single target magic damage ability. So I can cast it there on the dummy target. And you see basically a blade comes out and just strikes the target and does... X amount of damage, so I'll cast it here on the axe, and you see it does a ton of damage. It's basically just a burst damage spell, like Lion Finger of Death, pretty similar. Now, the one thing about this is the cast animation, again, pretty long, but also you can kind of stun it, so it has a short delay. So if you see, I cast it, it makes the noise quickly, it comes out, and then the damage happens a little bit later. So people can react, they can pop, you know, different things, they can manta dodge it, they can blink out, they can do a lot of stuff to actually um, dodge it if they're fast enough. So just keep that in mind, it's something that does happen occasionally with this hero. Um, it's one of the ways that this hero is balanced, because otherwise it'd be very, very hard to uh, kill this hero to balance the hero if the cast animations weren't this bad. So, that's Laguna Blade. So you can see, magic damage, low cooldown, magic damage, fairly low cooldown, and a stun, and a big burst damage um, ultimate with, that's also magic damage. So this is a very good magic damage hero and can do a ton of damage early on in the game, but then this hero also scales with right clicks. Now, why does it scale with right clicks? Well, that's because of the fiery soul passive. So this ability, basically, you get three stacks, um, that's the maximum stacks, and you get a stack every time you cast an ability. So that's kind of obvious that you can cast all three abilities really quickly with zero stacks like this. And now I have three stacks, and now I'm attacking extremely quickly. I'm also moving pretty quickly. I don't even have boots here, and I have 350 move speed. That's pretty good. Let's say you buy Boots of Travel, which you usually do on this hero. Now I have 471. That's a lot of movement speed. Even without the stacks, I can move pretty well. And then you add that uh, percentage movement speed bonus, and I start moving very, very quickly on this hero. So you can push lanes very quickly, you can escape very quickly, move around in team fights, catch people out, all that kind of stuff. I'm now, as you, if you see, here's my attack animation. Pretty bad, but uh, my attack speed is really not great if I don't have, you know, these abilities cast. So I'm going to cast Dragon Slave three times here. Now I have my, you know... My fiery soul stacks up, and now I'm cat like attacking very, very quickly, doing a ton of damage. Um, if I buy damage items like Daedalus, like MKB, even like Satanic to stay alive, all yes. of that kind of stuff. So that's why this hero can transition into more of a right click hero. You can buy some stuff like Boots of Travel, some other stuff, maybe Yules if you really need it, but you usually buy BKB, those kinds of things. Yes. And then you can really do a ton of magic damage, but then also a lot of right click damage. So you can get all of your spells off, start clicking people, your spells up again. You refresh the uh, the stacks, and then you do a ton of right-click damage. Now, keep in mind, the stacks are something where every time you cast an ability, it refreshes the total stacks. So in other words, it's not like, okay, I cast one ability, and now this is counting down. I cast another ability, and that first one's counting down. No, it refreshes the total stacks. So now that I have three stacks, it will stay three stacks until the very end, and then I can cast another ability right at the end and still have three stacks. So I'll show you right here. It's counting down. I cast it again, I still have three stacks. So, one of the things about this hero is to make sure that you're constantly keeping up your fiery soul stacks. Not only because you want to obviously attack very fast, but you want to be able to move around the map quickly. So you kind of want to be constantly spamming spells off cooldown whenever this fiery soul stack gets low so that you can, you know, join team fights, you can catch up to people, you can do more damage in fights. You really don't want to let this fiery soul stack decrease down to zero, especially once you have enough items to maintain a lot of mana spamming and those kinds of things. Usually buy bottle and other stuff on this hero. So that's pretty much lean. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Those are spells. You just buy right click stuff. You can even buy spell damage. Um, you could potentially buy Laguna Blade, which just makes this... Uh, makes this ability even better because it does uh, pure damage now and does more damage, so it's really good um, for that uh, because of that. And also, I think it decreases the cooldown, if I'm correct. Um, 
Yeah, oh no, it just slices through spell immunity. So it doesn't go through spell immunity and just does pure damage now, which obviously is a lot better, um, where before it doesn't go through BKB. Um, and then the other thing is you can buy this shard. Um, it's not the best shard, but it also increases Laguna Blade, so you can cast it here and it kind of jumps to another hero. So it just increases the damage of the hero in general, but it's not, like, necessary. A lot of times you want other items. But that's pretty much how to play Lina. Those are her abilities. Yes. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but a great kind of beginner hero. And I think you can see how she can do a lot of different things in the game with her abilities. They're kind of simple, kind of easy to understand, but you have to understand how to use them mechanically and how to, um... You know, just consistently use the hero, keep your stacks up, and execute all your spells and those kinds of things. So, that's Lena. Those are abilities. Now, let's jump into a game and see how she's played. So, now we're jumping into a game of Paparazzi playing Lena mid. And, obviously, she blocks, which is really good. Most heroes mid, you do want to block, so keep that in mind, even though I don't mention it very often. But, the main thing that I want to show you here is how he clicks the enemy range creep and then secures the range creep CS with Dragon Slave. That's something you want to do pretty much every lane in the first wave but not only does he do that he also is constantly using dragon slave to secure cs while he's also harassing the enemy with that same dragon slave so you see there he's used it twice already to kind of line up himself with the creep but also in line of tinker so that tinker gets harassed but also notice how not only is he looking for last hits, he's using Dragon Slave kind of to secure the last hits, and here we see the same thing again, almost like a TA lining it up so that you get the harass and the last hit, but also he's constantly clicking Tinker, clicking Tinker over and over and over again. Honestly, the only reason that we'll see here in a minute that Tinker has any kind of ability to stay in this lane and to get anything out of the lane is mainly because Tinker is a hero that um, has good not. spells against Lina because obviously he can spam a bunch of magic damage himself, and he has a laser ability that uh, makes right-clicking obviously miss a bunch. So you see this, obviously he uses that laser on Lena, now those right-clicks are kind of useless. But uh, if it was any other hero other than a Tinker, you can see how much Lena would be dominating. The other thing to keep in mind as we watch this here is, he's, Paparazzi's constantly keeping up these fiery soul stacks, even though he only has one point in it, it gives you 30 attack speed, that's pretty significant for uh, keeping harass up. So keep in mind that even when you get that one point, it is important to try to keep your fiery soul stacks up. If you can secure last hits with a, an ability and get harass on the enemy, it's good to try to keep those up. Get that up to three if you can, because then you're just going to constantly click the enemy. Click, click, click them over and over and over. Right click them, and you'll just do so much damage. If you're against, you know... If you play this way as Alina in a lane, you get really good at this, and you play against any hero other than Tinker, or even a Tinker that's not as good as, you know, this MMR, you can absolutely dominate lanes with your insane attack range, your spell damage, and that attack speed that you get from Fiery Soul, so just keep that in mind. That's the perfect example of how to play this lane, um... And it might even not be the best lane for Lena. It's not one of her best lanes, but it's still, he's doing very, very well here. Obviously, you see leading the CS charts um, with this. So this is exactly how you want to play this hero in mid. It's a perfect example. Um, I don't think it's very hard to copy. That's why I think you can really easily learn this hero if you're a newer hero to, or a newer player to playing mid. So that's pretty much Lena's laning stage. Now we'll transition to a little bit later um, once he has some more levels and he can kind of get his farm up and I'll show you how to do that. So the next thing I want to show you here is, unfortunately, he died by getting ganked um, by the Marcy. But as soon as he respawns, he actually casts both of his spells um, in Fountain to get that extra region, but also that extra movement speed to get out to the lane. So keep that in mind. That's something you definitely want to do. Now, eventually, you usually, gets bo you usually get boots of travel on this hero. So when you do respawn or when you do go back to base and then try to travel out, you want to spam all of your spells to get those fiery soul stacks up. Um while you're in base, while you basically have free mana and you don't have to spend any mana, and then you can TP out to the uh, lane and those kinds of things with your soul stacks all the way up. So just keep that in mind. That's something he does do. Now, once he goes back to the lane here, it is seven minutes in. He's level seven. He has enough... Um, he has enough levels in his Dragon Slave now that basically what he's going to be doing is he's going to just be farming. He's clearing out the mid wave, pushing out the mid wave, making sure that, you know, they can't take his tower while also looking to farm the jungle whenever he can. Now, this hero can get involved, you know, if you do see someone diving in the side lanes like this, you do have an ultimate that's a lot of burst damage. You have a ton of magical burst damage. You see two spells right there. He destroys a tanky strength hero. Like, that was pretty effective. Um, to just basically gank that, and this is kind of a low cooldown uh, ultimate for what it does, so keep that in mind. It is something that you can get involved, it's just that you don't have the best movement, you don't have the best, like, 
involvement or anything like that. You don't have a ton of mana to spend. You see, it doesn't, you know, he's not attacking for that fast yet because he doesn't have a ton of uh, levels in this. He doesn't really have enough mana. He used two spells. He took almost all of his mana. Now he has bottle charges and clarity. So honestly, you can get involved, just not as much as you otherwise can until you get your boost of travel. You get a few more items and then you can uh, spam more spells. Otherwise, you just kind of use your spells to clear out the wave. Use your spells to farm a little bit, um, like most mid heroes do these days with the small camp and all those kinds of things. And then you can transition once you get your boots of travel. That's really the timing where you can play around the map. Until then, really try to get your boots of travel as quickly as possible on this hero. Or at least your first item, whether it's BKB or whatever it is, maybe it's Yules. Getting that first item is just so crucial in this hero. You, like I said, you can get involved before then, but getting whatever that first item is, item is, is just really, really important to get that timing as quickly as possible. So the next thing I want to show you is basically what to do once you get your boost of travel timing or your first item timing. Now, obviously, he is mid because he's pushing it out. And so the fight does happen mid, which is kind of just a coincidence that this is where the fight is happening. I mean, there's various reasons for that. But even if this happened in the side lane, that would be completely reasonable to go to a side lane with your boots of travel now that you can have a lot of map presence. He, she also has, you know, three points in this uh, passive here. So you're doing a lot more attack damage because you're just attacking way quicker. You also have more movement speed, so it can get in and out of fights a little bit easier. Um, so we can see this. He's really pressuring the tower here because he knows Tinker is dead. Because this is something this hero can do. You actually do good tower damage just because your right clicks do a decent amount of damage and you attack pretty quickly. But this is the other thing I really want to show you here. So right there, I'll just pause it really quickly because actually what happens after this is they respawn and they kill her. But, um... He clears the trees with this stun. So Light Strike away Array as a stun does destroy trees. This is something that's very, very important on this hero because this hero, you do have a long range attack. You can kill towers pretty quickly once you have good attack speed, once you have a lot of damage items. But one of the biggest things is obviously getting caught out of position. So, you know, heroes TPing in and trying to catch you out of position when you are pushing a tower. That's very, very important. So what you can do is you can use your Light Strike Array to destroy trees, whether it's here, whether you're pushing this tower, it's here, whether it's down here, wherever it is that you think people are going to TP in, you can destroy the trees that gives you vision of that so that you know when they're TPing in and then you can run away before that TP is completed. So unfortunately for him, he just kind of sits there and waits and sees the tinker coming in but doesn't back in time and then feeds. But that's just a good example of what to do when you're pushing, how to use your light strike array to obviously clear the trees and make yourself a little safer. The other thing I will say on top of that in addition to what I showed you in the last clip where you're kind of spamming out spells, which I think he'll do here in a second if I just fast forward um, a little bit. He'll probably spam out spells in the fountain and TP out the lane, so we can probably watch that in a second here. Um, or he'll spam out spells as soon as he's... Yeah, he'll just spam out spells immediately once he TPs out to lane just to get some stacks up. But basically, one of the other big things is that early on especially, this Light Strike Array, although its cooldown is high here, it uh, does have a lower mana cost. So if you can if you can use this to keep up your uh, fiery soul stacks, then you do want to keep up those fiery soul stacks with Light Strike Array instead of Dragon Slave. But if you can do something like he just did right there, where you basically use a Dragon Slave to combination keep up stacks while also doing damage to creeps or farming or enemies, then that is something that you should consider doing. So you should use this if you want to be farming and things like that, but if you're just trying to keep up the stacks and not really having anything to hit with a nuke, then you want to be using your Light Strike Array just because it costs less mana, especially early on. So that's kind of how to play Lena once you get your boots of travel timing mid-game to farm, keep your stacks up, all of those kinds of things. So I'm just going to show you this sequence really quick because it's a 3v3. Um, but he has BKB available, and he's being very aggressive, and getting pickoffs, clearing waves, and pushing towers like this is something you can really do. Once you have your BKB on this hero, you can be pretty aggressive, especially early on. It's only 21 minutes, you know, there's not a ton of farm on every hero. He can be very, very aggressive and play very up in, you know, people's faces, especially with BKB. He also has Yules to potentially save himself or set people up. The other thing he can do now is because he has such long attack range, he can really take this tower down very, very quickly, um, with his attack speed. And with this really, really far attack range. So sieging towers is another really, really good thing that you can do on this hero. It's very um, effective to siege towers on this hero. Uh, so now the enemy team is going to come contest them. Uh, pretty much everybody's back up. But what you kind of notice is this team fight, now he gets pretty lucky with a regen rune. Basically the next sequence of team fight is just notice where he's playing on the map. Obviously he has a clockwork. He has a dark seer. He has an Ursa that likes to go in. All of that kind of stuff. But... Uh, 
With BKB, he does feel pretty safe, but generally he tries to play kind of on the outskirts. He kind of plays a little bit in the back. He wants to, you know, make sure that his teammates are either behind him or willing to go in. Obviously, he has BKB to make sure he can get out of sticky situations, but he generally lets his teammates go in first. So you see here, he's kind of watching the fight, trying to make sure no one's going on him. Now that his Ursa's in, now he's going to sit in the back and kind of, you know, hit people with his attack speed and stuff like that. He's going to poke people from behind. Um, but he's just not going to commit too hard to any fight. He's not going to run in melee range. Using this hero's attack range is extremely, extremely important. Um, but you see how as soon as he got into melee range there, as soon as he got into a place where, you know, he was unsafe, basically, the team immediately went on him, they doomed him, and then he instantly died with the Tinker. So it is one of those things that... Um, he felt safe with BKB, but you can't put yourself in a bad position um, in front of the team fight, or else you're going to risk dying like we just saw there. Obviously, Doom is a special spell that um, you obviously can't BKB through that, so that's something to consider. But basically, his positioning there wasn't good, and that's what kind of allowed his team to, or allowed his, you know, um, Ursa to die and him to die and all those kinds of things. So generally, you want to be sitting in the back. You want to kind of sit further away. You want to kind of treat yourself almost like a sniper because you can do a ton of damage as long as you're not being gone on and killed in the fight. So that's mainly how you want to play um, Lena in fights, sieging towers, all of those kinds of things. Now, the last thing I want to show you here is basically how to think about the hero in team fights later and how to get good Yule's combinations to play a little safer. We saw what he was doing when he was sieging the tower. We saw what he was doing when he was saving his BKB. And now he knows that the Doom is basically one of the biggest things, the only real thing that kills him. So as soon as the Doom comes in and stuns somebody, he immediately backs off. Um, and he plays on the outskirts of the fight now. He knows, okay, I don't want to risk myself going in. Um, but now he sees, you know, the Doom has used a lot of his spells. Now he can get his... Uh, Yule's combo off and basically just combo the hero down. That's a really good way to use to use Yule's. If you don't use that, you can maybe potentially get a um, Shadow Blade to like gank people, things like that. Um, or you can have your team set up and all that kind of stuff. But that's a pretty good example of how to play the team fights later. Is kind of sitting in the back, uh, you know, knowing what kills you and reacting to what kills you. So he knows that the Doom is what kills him, so he's basically just playing safe away from the Doom. He's making sure that if the Doom shows and tries to Doom him, that he just isn't the one getting Doomed. Otherwise, he's going to get all of his spells off. He's going to kill the enemy team. He's going to do a lot of damage in the fight. Um, so, obviously, these fights have been a little bit chaotic because they are a little bit higher MMR, so they're you know trying to do the best they can on the enemy team to kind of make sure that they're not just, like, dying straight up to the combos of um, the dire team here. But... That's pretty much how you want to think about your team fights, um, those two clips. Now, this is basically what you want to do with Lena in general. Once you get your boots of travel, once you feel safe, I go Lincolns on this hero sometimes, you know, if there's a spirit break or something like that, so that you can split push. You see that his team is taking Roche, they have an Ursa, he knows that, you know, Roche is perfectly fine with the Ursa. There's no reason that he can't, um, split push. Now, obviously, the enemy's very, very good and goes and <laughs> dooms him immediately, but, uh... Basically, split pushing on this hero is something that you really want want to be able to do uh, when you have your boots of travel, putting pressure on the map. And you see, it actually ends up working out perfectly. He, able, he was able to get his BKB off just as the Doom blinked in because he knew that was coming. He predicted that was coming. Then it ended up wasting the Doom. It ended up wasting everything because he was able to get all the spells off like that um, and get his BKB off. So that's a perfect example of, obviously, you want to put pressure on the map with Lena. You really can. You're really fast. You're hard to catch. Doom, Slark. Had a hard time catching this Lena, um, despite them getting the Doom off and blinking and surprising him. But uh, that's, I think, a perfect example of both how to team fight, how to think about the hero in general, and also how to split push on the map um, with this hero. Because split pushing and being effective with map pressure is something you really, really want to do on Lena, because you clear waves so quickly, and you can also take towers and siege towers pretty effectively as well because of your attack range. So that's pretty much how to play Lena. I pretty much cover everything. It's one of those heroes that I think is a good all-around hero. You have a lot of spell damage. You can set up kills if you buy Yules, if you buy Shadow Blade. You can kind of sit there, be like a sniper, be like a Medusa, just kind of deal a ton of damage, keep your stacks up, all of those kinds of things. You have a very good laning stage. You can be very aggressive, um, especially in the right matchup. You can siege towers. You can do a lot of magic damage in fights, all that kind of stuff. You are such a good all-around hero. It's just about, you know, positioning yourself well in team fights, positioning yourself well on the map, knowing what kills you and reacting to it effectively so that you can apply the most pressure pressure, and get the most farm and uh, do the most on the map with your hero. So that's Lena. That's how to play Lena. That's how to think about Lena. Like I said, another great all-around hero for mid, for anybody that wants to learn mid. So I hope this was effective and helpful for you guys. As always, like, comment, subscribe, all of those things. All the links are below for Discord, for Patreon, for my Twitch, where I do replay reviews. If you want a replay to be reviewed, obviously request it um, below or request it on the Discord. That's where I'm taking it from now on, where I do my replay reviews on Twitch nowadays, um, usually every Friday. So 
If you want that, just let me know. If you want coaching, obviously go to my Patreon for that. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.